Hello everybody, welcome back. Happy Sunday. So today, um, I'm feeling a little bit sick. I have been, is there like a bug in the air? What am I looking at? So I've been so sick since Christmas and it's like this weird kind of like, I have no energy, sniffling like a little bit, but I don't know. Either way, I've spent like so much time on my couch and I still have like minimal energy and I'm still sniffling. So I thought we'd do something pretty low key. You can see Mr. Paddington behind me because he knows this video was about him. So, hello. I bribed him with a cookie to get up here. So today we are going to be doing 50 facts about Paddington because we did 50 facts about me a while ago and I thought it would be fun to do one about Paddington and we have an exciting announcement um, on like the 50th fact so stay tuned to the end because I'm so excited oh my gosh I like I got the news like the other day and oh my god I'm so excited so anyways I have my laptop here with all of the facts are you a good puppy are you ready to tell everybody all about yourself are you ready Paddington's birthday is July 14th, 2016. So he's like a year and a half-ish. He's a purebred Pomeranian. And his coloring is orange sable. So if you're looking for a Pomeranian that has the same coloring as him, that is what you should ask for. And he weighs six pounds. So typically, um, I know a lot of people ask if he's like a miniature, um, or at least like in person, a lot of people ask that. And no, so, Typically, like purebred palms are, they range from like five to seven pounds. So he's like right in the middle, even though you feel a little bit chunky. Apparently, you're normal. Yeah. Get me a little chunky man. Chunky puppy. Oh, you just burped in my face. Oh. Um, he does that too. Extra fact. <laughs> uh, but there are some Pomeranians who are bigger because Pomeranians actually used to be much bigger, like years and years and years ago. So sometimes you get a palm that has like genetic traits or that like picks up those genes from like way back then so I know a lot of palms are bigger but most of them are like the American Kennel Club like standard at least is I think like five to seven pounds. So he is an only child and I don't just mean like within my household uh, but when he was like born so his dad I'm gonna show photos here because it's like the cutest thing in the world his dad's name is Patton and his mom's name is Cairo yes I keep the gate Cleo, but it's Cairo, and aren't they like the cutest little dog, oh my gosh. So, yes, he was an only child, and apparently his mom puppy spoiled him, and clearly his human puppy, no. <laughs> his, his human mom, that took me way too long to figure out, his human mom is spoiling him as well. All the time. All the time. Okay. I got him on October 6th, 2016, and so... When, um, when I got him from the breeder, so because I got him from a breeder, if you want more information, I'll have another video that I did about like the process of getting him, a link like in the cards here if you're curious. But, um, so I, I wanted a palm for years and years and years, like I physically like needed one. <laughs> and um, so I knew I was getting one, but because um, the breeder shows dogs, she doesn't know if they're show quality until they're around like 12 weeks old or 10 weeks. And that's when I'd be getting one as well. So I was like mostly prepared for him, but I didn't know exactly when I'd be getting him. So she uh, <laughs> she emailed me like like one day saying like Paddington is like ready. He'll be ready in like three weeks or so. And I was like, oh my god, I was crying. And then I realized that I was going to be in New York with my mom um, for her birthday. Like I'd be getting back to Toronto like three days or something or two days before Paddington would arrive and it was like I was so excited and I love New York so it's all these good things but like zero time to prep and it was like the craziest like almost worst worst time ever but um, obviously I didn't it was fine but it was so busy so so busy and so when I was in New York I was like picking up like all the extra stuff that I need for him but yeah so he's actually from Nova Scotia in Canada so I am from Toronto and I live in Toronto right now and um, so I was willing to fly out to like pick him up myself, but they're like, no, it's okay since it's a short flight and since it's a heated flight, 
um, they offered to send him. So I picked him up at the airport. I actually showed this on Snapchat. If I can find the footage, I'll like insert it here. Hey guys, so I'm at the airport and we're gonna walk in and get Paddington. Prepare for the next thing you see me, like tears gonna be streaming down my face. I've already cried once today. Okay, guys, so it's a little dark, but look at oh, my head. This is Paddington. Hi. So he was just oh, burrowing. He's, He's like exploring in his little playpen. Those are all my stuffed animals that I've given him. <laughs> so, you guys, my family just left. So now it's just me and Paddington, and he's running around the house making cute little noises. Hi. Hi. Say hello. Paddington. Paddington. He loves this chair because it's furry and he tries to keep nibbling on it. But you're not supposed to, no. Look at his little bum. Paddington, come here, hi. Where are you going? Come here, come here. We're watching the Mindy Project together. <laughs> so I have this little toy corn for him and he's decided that the blanket underneath my coffee table is his nice bed and so he grabbed the corn and took it to bed. <laughs> oh my god. Play fetch. Go get it, go get it. So he's playing with his corn and it's like as big as he is. Hi baby! How are you? <laughs> so I picked him up at the airport and he was in his little kennel and he was like crying a little bit and a little unsure but oh my god he's so cute. And he's so cute, oh my gosh. But um, yeah, so he, he took his first flight when he was only like 12 weeks old. His favorite toys are these. They're not even supposed to be toys. I mentioned it's in another video, but they're like little treat covers. They're for a little game where like you hide his food or treats and he has to like use his little dog sniffing instincts to find the treat. And it's good to like kind of force them to use, I guess like senses that they don't necessarily need to use, like foraging senses, I think. I think that's what it's called, I don't know. Um, they don't need to use since they're domesticated now, but so I got that for him to like use his like scent skills But he just loves the covers and so those are his favorite toys and he will do zoomies He'll do like this little whirring noise when he's super super excited and I'll insert the whirring noise here <laughs> Paddington You're crazy These are post bath zoomies that happen every single time after he gets a bath. Oh my god. <laughs> He dislikes anything dark and taller than him. It's really, really weird. So there's like, it's like anything that's like this tall and dark. So if I have tall boots and they're sitting in the hallway, he'll like bark at them. If I have my KitchenAid on the counter, cause it's not usually on the counter, um, he'll like notice it's there and bark and be really unhappy about it. Or like tall, like, like paper bags that are on the counter, he'll bark at them. So I don't know what it is that like, trigger him but yeah he doesn't like this kind of thing that being said everything else he is like in love with and obsessed with so he i know a lot of sometimes like so i know sometimes palms like have like their one person that they like and then everyone else is just kind of like meh and i've met a lot of palms like that and i was so upset because like i wanted them to love me but paddington loves everyone like he actually the one guy he didn't like was the was someone i dated which like Paddington could tell before I could that he wasn't a good guy. <laughs> he like, I was like, go run to him, and he like, he wouldn't run to him. And I'm like, okay, like that's a sign. Anyways, um, for most people, <laughs> he will like run and like bounce and just get so happy, so excited, um, and it's so cute. Everybody who meets him like absolutely loves him. It's so cute. But. And same with food. He's such a foodie. Like he loves every kind of food, even when he's not supposed to. I have another story, and that's another fact, but I will leave that later. When we go on for walks, he will bark at me if I tell him, like, let's go on. Because, like, I can't say that now because he'll, like, go insane. Um, but if I say that and then I haven't gotten ready before I said that, he will bark at me. Like, he'll be like, he'll, because I get all excited and then he's like, mom, you're taking too long. And he'll get impatient and get upset and bark at me being like, hurry up. You said we're going to go outside and you're taking too long. So, little sass king. Such a sass king. Ooh, did you hear that burp? You burped. You burped on camera. His favorite food is salmon, and he actually has a salmon cry. <laughs> like, it's a very specific cry when you're cooking salmon, and he will like cry 
and cry and cry like he is dying, like he has never been fed in his life. It's like the saddest, most desperate, like I'm a sad, poor, starving puppy. No one ever feeds me, no one ever loves me. I need your salmon. Like that's his cry. And whenever I hold my DSLR camera, he like, which is the one I filmed for YouTube, he posts in front of it because he's so used to like me taking photos of him now that like whenever I have the camera out, he thinks it's for him. I don't know why he's not doing that right now. Oh, like he's sitting in the window. So cute. Um, maybe I'll like shift this way so you can see him. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so he will like get all excited and he does his little like kickies and he gets so excited and like sits and poses and like gets ready because he loves it. And then after I take a photo, he runs behind the camera and like looks at it. Like he looks at it in the little display monitor. It's so cute. It's like he's like checking to be like, oh mommy, like how did the photo turn out? So cute. So he doesn't actually know the word treat. And instead of treat, I use the word cookie. <laughs> you see? Um, because I think that's cuter. When I first got him, his breeder gave me like this little manual of like what to do with him. And she said that like you can give them bedtime cookies. And <laughs> this is a lot of turn. And if I really mean it, do you want a cookie? Do you want a cookie? Look at that. Oh yeah, now I have to follow through. Oh! Okay, let's get a cookie. Let's get a cookie. Okay. Now you gotta sit. Delicious? Is that a delicious cookie? So this is a stressful story, but it has a good ending, so it's fine. Um, so the third day I had him, I um, I had him on the couch and I was putting his harness on. Just note to anybody who has a puppy, don't put anything on them when they're on an elevated surface. My couch is my couch was very very low to the ground, so I thought that was fine. It wasn't. Uh, but anyway, I was putting his harness on and he jumped. And he landed on the ground. He was, he, like, physically he was fine, but he, like, was crying. And it was the first time I heard him cry. It was, like, the most heartbreaking. Like, my heart, don't try to drink my coffee. Right. The sass hasn't left. He always just, like, checks the tables to make sure that, like, just see if there's food. Um, but, yeah, he was, like, screaming and crying. I was, like, oh, my God, he broke his leg. I was so worried about, like, him breaking a limb. Because, like, when they're puppies, their bones are super fragile. So I was super careful, but that was like stupid, stupid lapse in judgment. And um, he like ran into the bathroom and he was sitting there like crying. And I'm like, oh my god, like I ruined my dog's life. And so I was like feeling him all over to make sure he was okay, and he was. So I think it just scared him, but like, oh, I felt so, so bad. Oh my god, it was like the third day I had him. We were going to my cottage to like go to Thanksgiving and everything. Oh, I felt so bad for him. So. Um, luckily, luckily nothing happened. He hasn't like seriously hurt himself ever. So like knock on wood, there is no wood in this vicinity. Um, if I knock, he'll start barking. Okay, I did it quietly. <laughs> um, so yeah, nothing, luckily nothing's happened to him, but oh God. So he thinks every plush toy is for him. Everything, everything is his in his mind. Like this whole condo is his, like I'm his in his mind. So, um, when I was at Next Up, like YouTube Next Up, uh, Talos was there, and they give us these little monkeys that have, like, little Velcro arms and legs, and so I put one on my camera bag, and, um, just as, like, a little, like, memento of YouTube Next Up, and, um, the other day, I had it sitting out, and Paddington, like, saw it, and he sniffed it, and it was, like, he'd never seen that before, he, like, was walking by, he sniffed it, and then he just ripped it off, and, like, ran to the head of my condo and he's like it's mine but like, what the heck my mother was sitting there and my jaw just like dropped like the sass the sass in him to just do that so he does that all the time it's ridiculous. he also eats his poop and i i talked to the breeder about this apparently like it depends on like if the parents did it then the puppy's more likely to do it it's i asked the vet and they just laugh and say dogs do that so like oh but I like I fight him for his poop. It's disgusting. I didn't know that like my life would be like this. Um, but there was one time when um, when he was a puppy, and I still had like pee pads down, and he was in his like little like contained pen because he didn't have like access to the whole house. And um, he was chewing on something and facing away, and I thought he'd like gotten it like had like a piece of paper or something because he's done that before. 
And so without looking, I reached around to grab it out of his mouth, and it was poop. And so I just like grabbed it with my bare hand. It was so gross, so gross. I like yelled. I'm like, oh my god! I'm, like as soon as I did it, it was so so gross. Um, but yeah, so. So I am in a condo that has a balcony, which is really really handy because we have something. Yes, yeah, thank you for the ball. Uh, we have something called a porch potty, which is a little like big thing of grass in this little stand, whatever, and it drains when he piddles on it, it drains into like a little bucket below. So it's super, super handy, so that like obviously when we go out for walks he does his stuff, um, but like throughout the day if he needs to go, he doesn't need to like hold it, he can just go whenever he likes. So um, to like to teach him like to let me know when he needs to go, oh, I have like, these little bells hanging on a string um, or a little ribbon off the door handle and so when he needs to he rings the bell and then I open the door and he goes out. So um, he knows that and so he now uses the bell as like a mommy I want attention. Why do you eat your eating string attached to the ball? Oh look at you, you're crazy, you're crazy. So whenever he wants attention or he just wants anything he'll ring the bell for me to come to him and he even rings it. Um, he even rings the bell, and then I let him out, and he does exactly what it looks like when he piddles. So he like goes on his little grass patch, he does his little dance, and then um, he like squats, and he does his little potty face where he like makes eye contact with me, and it's just like, mm. and then um, and then he jumps off, and then he runs to his little like pantry area where all of his cookies are, and then he waits. And so he did that once, and I'm like, I don't think you actually went to the bathroom like he did everything and so I like checked to see if he was wet underneath and he wasn't and I was like oh my god you lied like you lied to me and then he got super sassy and playful and like attacked my feet and so now he does that all the time so every time after he pees unless I like see it coming out I have to check because he just lies to like get cookies it's insane so, nice. so I know you guys have seen like him in all of his costumes and everything, and he actually really likes them. He doesn't mind at all. He's super, super easy that way, except for his Ralph Lauren raincoat. So I bought that raincoat, I believe like, um, I'd say like two years before I got him, two or three years before I got him, because I knew I wanted a palm, and um, Ralph Lauren was having a sale, and I had a doggy raincoat, and I'm like, who knows if this will ever be back again and I need to get it now. So I bought it and it's like, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's yellow. I'll insert a photo here. He's so cute in it. But whenever I put it on him, he like stiffens up and he's like, I don't like it. So, but like when we're outside, like the fact that he's outside distracts him and he doesn't mind it there. Um, but whenever I put it on him, he looks at me like, mommy, why? Cute, but I feel bad. He has been to New York. Last year, around like early December, I flew down um, with P18 to do an event at their store. So we flew down to New York to do um, to go to an event at their store in New York, and so Paddington flew with us, and um, it was so much fun. And he would like walk around the city. And he was like super excited, and he like fitted. We went to um, I think we went everywhere. We went to like Bergdorf. We went to Henry Bendel. They loved him. They like monogrammed his little stuff for free because like literally every dog accessory I have is from Henry Bendel for him. Um, and we went to Central Park, and he loves Central Park. I have a little photo of him of him like on a little bench in Central Park. It was so cute. And he saw he met like another little like white fuzzy dog. And what are you doing? Like burrowing into the couch. Um, and they were both puppies, so they're like both excited because they had like the same energy level. What are you doing? Anyways, yeah, and he was super quiet on the plane, like he didn't bark or cry at all, it was amazing. Um, and when we were going through security, I had to like carry him, he couldn't be in his little like kennel. So I carried him through security and everybody was like, oh my gosh, he looks like a little squirrel. So yeah, like it was like the easiest time going through security because like, everybody likes a cute little puppy, don't they? Are you cute? Are you a cutie pie? Yes, you are. So he has learned that sitting equals please. So whenever he ha whenever I have something that he wants, he'll like look at me and sit and be all polite. And so that means please in like puppy language. He is obsessed with bananas. I think that's the first fruit that I introduced him to. Or no apples actually. But um, anyway, 
He loves bananas so much. Like if he sees me have one, he will run to me and like cry for one. So at Christmas this year, or during Christmas, I think it was like on Boxing Day or the day after, um, I took him out. It was like so cold outside, so cold. And so since he's like tiny, if it's like really, really cold, I mean like minus like 14, I don't take him out because like it's just why. Um, but there was so much snow and so I thought it'd be fun because he loves the snow. So I like bundled him up and we took him outside just like on the lawn at my cottage and he'd never experienced snow drifts before. So he didn't know that like you would sink in and the first one he stepped on he stayed on the surface because like he's just he's so light but then he was walking around and he came back like towards me he was on a leash but um he stepped and he like sunk into the snow drift and he was like oh because he face planted and then he turned around to try to like go back and he face planted again and the little the sad like shocked look of like mommy like what is this this is awful this look on his face he was like horrified and so we kept walking a little bit um, and then he looked at me and his little foot was in the air like I just like I want to go inside. So I took him inside and he sat bundled up in like a little towel for like 45 minutes. He was like so so upset. His little face. He was so unhappy because there's just like snow all over him. And yeah he does not. He's a city puppy. Such a city puppy. And uh, yeah, so he was like sitting in my lap and like we fed him like banana with peanut butter on it and like a strawberry and stuff like that because like we spoil my dog. Um, but yeah, so not a fan of snow drifts, but it was cute. Sad, but cute. <laughs> and he's also really good with snow boots. So the first time like of the year, he's kind of like, he forgets what they are and like bites them a little bit, but he's really, really good. Even with the heavy duty ones, um, my parents, <laughs> it's like such a grandparent thing to do, but like it was when I was at YouTube Next Up, my parents sent me a photo. They're like, we couldn't get the little, like those like little balloon ones on, I'll insert a photo. Um, the little like ones that just stretch over your dog's feet and those took a while for me to like get the hang of my parents couldn't figure it out so they're like we just went out and like bought new snow boots for him and they're like these heavy duty snow boots and they're like sixty dollars like for dog boots I'm, like that's such like, a grandparent thing to like go and like spoil like hell up spoil your like grand puppy um but yeah so he has like really good snow boots now and i lost them <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> They're somewhere in my condo. They're so tiny, it's so easy to lose a dog boots. Oh my god. And he likes to lay on his back and relax on my legs and like lean his little head backwards. It's so cute. Ow, bit me. Let me see if he like wants to do it now. Come here. Come to mommy. Oh, look at mommy. Oh, look at my little baby. Yes, look at you. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at him. Look at him. And we can stretch our tummy. Oh, I think we just have to play. But I want to show them how cute you are. Look at the little bear. The little bear. And his little fuzzy tummy. Okay, good. We're done. We're done. Also, look at one of his little tricks. Look. Kisses. No, no. Excuse me. Of course, he doesn't do it when I'm filming. That is it. Come here, your turn. Kisses. Kisses. Because he was a toy and he's distracted. Kisses! Whenever I say kisses, he licks me. It's so cute. So cute. Good kisses. Can I have more kisses? Good kisses. Okay, good boy. You can never try that. Thank you for humoring me. So he'll also pin me down sometimes if he's like in the right mood and force kisses on me. It's like, it's cute because it's dog. And it's so cute. He's like oddly strong. Like, obviously, I could like fight him off if I wanted to. He's six pounds. But, um,. It's so cute because he'll put like both arms like on either side, like an arm on either side of my neck and like force me down and like just like kiss me so much. It's so cute. On sort of a video, I filmed it and he was just like, oh, it's so cute. So, yeah.
you lick my mouth. It's so gross. Oh. Are you gonna get me? Huh? Hello? <gasps> I feel like you're gonna jump on me. In the face. Oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> oh, we're safe. We're safe. He also eats my rugs. It's so frustrating. So, um, this beautiful rug from PB Teen, he like nibbles at the edges and like it gets the threads loose and then pulls them and then I see like these like little bunches of threads on the floor and then he tries to eat them, which is bad for him. Okay, it seemed to have like, st like filming just seemed to have like stopped. I don't know why. But, oh, thank you for kisses. Um, but either way, yeah, so I think I need to spray the rug with like bitter apple spray to get them to stop chewing. And for those of you guys who like don't know, bitter apple spray is really, really good to stop your dog from like chewing stuff. And there's a specific brand that works better. I'll have it linked below if you want to check it out. It's It works really, really well. Paddington powers through it sometimes. It's like there's no winning. What are you doing? Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. And his favorite spot in my condo is, surprise, surprise, this little perch right here. So my, obviously my couch is right here. And so he jumps on the couch and then he sits here and like the window's here. So he like sits and looks out like most of the day, probably from like, I'd say like whenever we wake up until like maybe like two o'clock-ish. And then sometimes he'll go sleep in his little bed from PBT. And then after that, he'll wake up and come back to the perch until it's like, darkish outside maybe like eight o'clock and then he'll go to the bed and like sleep there so he has his like own little routine it's so cute um, but yeah he looks like a little cat because of his ears when he looks in the window it's so cute so I bought him a custom bed or had a custom bed made for him off of Betsy before I got him and it looks like a human bed and it's so cute and the only way he'll use it is if I put like a syrup blanket on it otherwise he does not care and all he does is like chew on the edges and I feel like I, I realize it's one of those things where you're like, oh, my child will love it. And then they just don't care. And you spent so much money on it. But it's so cute. So if you're looking for a cute little bed like that, um, check the description box. I'll, I'll have her shop linked if they still make um, those beds because they're really cute. This is the most awful, awful story. Um, but it ends well, so it's okay. But when he was... It, the hair that's not the story okay um when he was mm, a puppy so i guess last winter um i was uh, walking him with my mom and like proper etiquette or like the good thing to do when like your dog sees another dog is to ask the person if your dog can say hello because you don't know if the dog has like aggression issues or they don't like puppies or something like that so you need to like check with the owner to make sure like their dog is fine and so this guy he had two dogs two like like medium largest dogs and he said it was fine so they were sniffing and they were fine and then literally out of nowhere this like the darker of the two dogs I think I think that one was tan and one was like a black color but the darker one he growled and picked up Paddington like Paddington yeah so the dog picked him up like Paddington's entire head and neck was in the dog's mouth and Paddington was screaming and the dog was growling and like I was like crying and I, so I like the first thing was like who gives a crap with the big dog so I like made so I took Paddington out and I made sure that like Paddington was okay and Paddington was screaming and crying and he had his little winter jacket on and I think that might have protected him um but I like took Paddington's jacket off and I checked I was so sure I was gonna see blood it was awful so awful and my mom was there, so she was like, I don't know what she was doing, we were both freaking out. But anyway, we took Paddington's jacket off, I checked everywhere, I like squeezed everywhere on him to make sure that like nothing made him cry out in pain. And luckily, 
he was just scared. Like, it could have gone so much worse, so much worse. I was so upset um, and just, like, horrified by what had happened. Like, this big dog had my dog's head in his mouth, and, like, the owner let them sniff each other. Like, what the hell? Sorry. Um, <laughs> and um, so I got the guy's phone number. I'm like, I'm going to... Like, give me your contact details if anything, like, happens. If something, if I notice anything up, up, up with my dog, I'll let you know. Because, like, if, if, if I've heard, like, that's what you do. You get the person's contact information if, like, their dog hurts your dog. And then you sort that bills out later if those things happen. Um, luckily, Paddington was okay. And I was really worried that he um, kind of developed a fear of larger dogs after that. He was completely fine. I'm the one who has PTSD from that. He, it like, still loves everything, still is happy with everything. Whenever we see other dogs now, I'm like, oh my god, don't do it again. So I'm freaking out. But um, he's okay, and that's the most important part. So, yeah, like, oh, it was so awful. And, like, I was like, do we, like, we just started, like, on the walk. So I'm like, do we go inside? And I'm like, no, I'm like, it would be good for him if we just, like, keep going and just, like, just go through it and, like, let it... I don't know, like walk it off. And he was completely fine. So thank God, thank God. It was awful, like so bad. And um, the guy like texted me asking me how Paddington was and stuff like that. So he was a nice guy, but like, wow, like what the heck? Ugh, oh, so. So we look onto um, another roof that's lower. And if he ever sees a change in like how cars are aligned there, or a person walk on the roof, he will bark because it's like his territory and he doesn't give them permission to like be there. And like no one cares about a little palm in the window, but like. So right now there's a car that isn't usually there because it's pretty deserted and like there is a police station. I think that building is a police station or like a big one or what, I don't know, like where they keep their cars. So um, that's where they keep them. And so nothing really changes that often, but there's like a car in in like the middle of the roof. Oh, you're unhappy, are you? Huh? Are you frustrated? They didn't ask you permission. They didn't come here by you. Oh no. He loves the vet, and the vets say that he's their favorite palm, which is so good. Because apparently they say, like, when palms are there, they're, like, shaking and everything like that. Um, or, like, sometimes a little bit, like, snappy, but Paddington, like, loves it. He's scared sometimes, but he's just, like, super chill, and he lets them, like, do whatever they need to do. And, um, yeah, they said that, like, he is their favorite. Oh, yay. Yay. I did good. Because he's my first dog, so, like, I don't even, I don't know point of reference as, like, what I should be doing, so... I'm I'm really glad that the vet is happy with him. So after he got neutered, so I have so when you adopt a, or when you purchase a dog from a breeder, um, or at least most of them, with mine anyways, um, there was an agreement that he had to get neutered within the first year of having him. I think it's just to prevent you from like getting the dog and then using them in like backyard breeding or something like that, and also to keep the like the line clean. I think that's why. So anyways, when he was like seven or eight months old, I got him neutered. And, um, oh, the poor little thing. I was, like, so stressed. I'm like, oh, my God, like, please, like, nothing go wrong with surgery. I was, like, that mom. Um, but they called me to come pick him up, so I went to pick him up. And he said, like, they said he was fine. Like, he was just, like, a little bit, like, sleepy and groggy. It was so cute. Um, at the second he saw me, though, he started crying. And they're like, I'm like, has he been crying this whole time? They're like, no. Like, he literally just started crying when he saw me. So it's, like, he knew that, like, he was actually fine with the other people, but the second he saw his mom, he was like, no, mommy, it was awful. It was awful. It was, like, so cute and sad, and I'm like, you're just kind of, like, milking it because you want the love, I'm pretty sure. So he eats from surf and turf kibble, and I looked, I looked it up. This is what his breeder recommended, so that's why I, I give it to him. And it's, like, it's made from hand-picked fruits and vegetables. Like, how... like a fancy little puppy um, and when he was a puppy he ate from gold puppy in like the hot pink bag which I approve I think it's a really pretty bag. So his little bedtime routine and he does it so well each night is he goes piddle one last time and then he runs and goes to get a cookie and then he knows it's like bedtime because like the lights are off so he runs to my bed and he does a little spin and then after the spin 
he like stands up on his hind legs and sticks his little arms out and then I pick him up and put him on my bed um, but every night it's like a little routine it's so cute to see him do it so when he was a puppy um, he was like eating this piece of paper, he had a piece of paper in his mouth and so I was like across the room and I saw him and we made eye contact and like he knew that he shouldn't be doing that. So I saw him and there was like a little piece of paper sticking out of his mouth and I took one step close to him and he like put it a little bit more inside his mouth and then I took another step and he like, like sucked it in a little bit more and then the closer I got he like kept pulling the paper like deeper and deeper into his mouth to the point where like when I was right next to him it was gone you sassy puppy like knowing that you're not supposed to be doing it and just like gradually like hiding it from me also another sassiness that happened like last week in my stocking my mom gave me ginger shortbread and ugh, um he like from the beginning he was like obsessed with that he was like clawing at the bag trying to get it when I was opening my stocking and so I was eating it the other day and I turned around for like literally one second one second and it was on my side table like one little like cookie was on the side table and I turned around and he was on the ground and he had something in his mouth I'm like what is that and it was the freaking shortbread he like took it and he ran under my bookshelf and he inhaled it because he didn't want me to get it for him from him so he ate like he's a small dog right but and he ate like a piece of like that shortbread in like the span of like 30 seconds just to like hide it from me and like get it before I could get it. The little pig, such a pig. Oh my gosh, and I checked the ingredients and he was fine after that, but like, oh man, so sassy. So sassy, so sassy, look at you. So the smoke alarm, not the fire alarm in my building, but the smoke alarm like if I burn something, it terrifies him. It's so, so sad. He, um, the first time it happened, he didn't know like what it was, and he was standing in my office, and like the look of like horror on his face. Oh my god, he was so upset, and he peed himself. He was so scared. I felt so bad for him. And now, whenever it happens, yeah, and like he was also like shaking, like shaking so much because he was so scared. I felt so so bad. My heart totally like, like breaks for him. Um, and every time since this happened, it's only happened like two or three times. So luckily, I don't burn stuff too often. Um, but he like runs into the couch and like is like shaking in fear. Oh, so sad. So when he was a puppy, I, cause I'd never had a dog before. I was like, how do I interact with him? I didn't know what to do. So I started like mimicking what he does. And I realized that he like responded so well to it. And we bonded so quickly. Are you looking at mommy? Are you looking at your mommy? No, you sure. So I keep doing it now. And like whenever he does something puppy, like for like, if I make a little noise, like, ah, ah. I don't know, this is so weird posting this online. Um, but anyways, if I make like a little like playful noise or if I bark at him or I don't know, if I just like do like dog-like movements, he responds so well and we've like bonded so much over it. It's so cute. Yeah. So he loves this food scavenging toy. I forgot to include it in his like what I got for Christmas or what he got for Christmas video. But um, I'll like insert a clip here of him playing with it. But you basically hide kibble in it or like you can do other food. But he gets enough treats that it's like going to be kibble for this toy. And um, he has to like find the kibble and he can find it everywhere. He gets so excited that he like rips the little lids, the little red lids off. It's insane. But um, yeah, he loves it so much. It's so cute to see him playing with it. He is still pulled on his leash. This is the one thing that I haven't been able to like get a hang of. Um, I think it's a combination of like him being just like a Pomeranian and like they're sassy. But also because I'm so uncoordinated that I don't like him being behind me where I can't see him because I feel like I'm gonna kick him with the back of my foot or just like shut him in a door or something like that that like I, cause I don't I don't even like use my peripheral vision like I have it but I never focus on it I have such tunnel vision it's insane so it's like it's so hard for me to like walk and not like kick him or something if he's behind me like I've never done it but I feel like I'm going to so it's easier if he's just like in front of me so that's why I haven't trained him so much to like walk like heel or like walk behind my knee or like that kind of like don't go farther than my knee so I don't know what to do like it's technically it's bad etiquette but um I'm such a klutz that I don't even know like it's 
the most easier for him to be walking in front. And he, like, he doesn't have crazy attitude because I allow him to do it, so I don't know. He loves getting brushed, which is so good. Um, at the beginning, when he was a puppy, I like wanted to start right away because if you don't, then they don't like it. Um, but he's like totally gotten the hang of it now where I spray him with his little like conditioning spray and then I spray him with a detangler and then I brush him out and he just like sits and poses and then he goes to the other side and poses. It's so cute. He doesn't like his bum being brushed, so that's like the one thing that we have to keep working on. But um, yeah, it's so cute. And it's so nice. I brushed him last night and he's like all like puffy and soft and fluffy ears and you have no tangles. He's so nice. Nice. But he always seems to get tangles like behind his ears. If you guys have dogs, like does that happen to you too? That always happens, so I always have to like trim the little knots out. Yeah, because they're too they're too big to brush out because it'll hurt you. Actually, funnily enough though, he is like sponsored or something by Spa Boutique, which is a groomer in Toronto. And um they they have this deal where like if your dog has like 40,000 followers on Instagram or more, you can get free like grooming appointments if you like share on Instagram that your dog went there. And so Padding doesn't have 40,000 yet. If you can get him there, that would be great. <laughs> but um, I was like, I have more on my Instagram, so would that be okay? And so we like made an agreement that like I post on mine as well whenever Paddington gets groomed. And um, yeah, so he gets free grooming now, which is amazing, and Spa Boutique is so good, they treat him so well, and he always leaves, like, super happy, which is great, and, um, like, fluffy and soft and everything. He also loves Australian Shepherds. They're, like, he, he met one when he was in, like, puppy training classes, um, like, obedience classes, and, like, since then, he just, like, he is drawn to Australian Shepherds. Like, if I wasn't set on... Um, like Pomeranians or Pugs as like ones that I want to own, I would totally get an Australian Shepherd just because it makes him so happy and so cute. So <laughs> related to Pugs, I take him to Pug meetups. So every month in Toronto, or like mostly every month unless it's like super hot or super cold, they have this like Toronto Pug Rumble. And so I take Paddington because I like always wanted to get a Pug. So I was like, it's good to socialize him with Pugs so that he gets familiar with them if I ever get a Pug. And, um, so, yeah, we go every month, and now he's so used to pugs that, like, if we're out and he sees, like, a bunch of dogs and there's a pug there, he will, like, automatically go to the pug because he's more familiar with pugs. It's so cute. He actually hasn't been swimming before. I haven't taken him swimming. I don't know what, I, like, last summer I think I was just so busy and I didn't have, um, Last summer I had no life, basically. Like, it was just, it was so busy. It was so many, oh my god, so many things were happening last summer that, like, I was stuck at home um, most of the summer. But this year we're going to go swimming, and I'm so curious, like, what he thinks of the water. I've heard that a bunch of pumps don't like the water, but I have a feeling that Paddington will enjoy it. He'll be, like, a little bit confused, but I think he'll like it, and I want to film it because I think it would be so cute, so... Stay tuned for Swimming Paddington. Yeah, I can look like a little rat though because all of his fur will get all like wet and tiny. Yeah, you're just gonna shrink. He is obsessed with water bottle caps. Like whenever I open a bottle of water or like sparkling water, he will run and like try to like bite the cap. I don't know why he likes it. I feel like it's like a nice like, I don't know, texture in his mouth or something. I have no idea, but he is obsessed. And it might be because like once when he was a puppy, I poured some water into the cap and I like gave it to him as like a little mini bowl because I thought it was cute. And um, since then now he like loves them and he tries to steal them. And I don't want him to choke on them so I don't give, him, give them to him, but um, he loves them so much. He knows how to pose for the camera and so like if I snap and I point somewhere, he will like go there and then he knows to stay and he knows to sit or like go down or something like that. And if I take like too many photos without like showing him what the photos look like, he's such a diva, um, or give him like a cookie or something, he gets frustrated and he gets like all worked up and he starts like doing his kickies. He's like, come on mom, like come on. And I'm like, no, like power through, we're almost done, we're almost done and then you get your cookie. And he gets like so impatient and it's like, just give me the treat already, it's so funny. So when my mom was babysitting him, um, apparently she told me that she was cooking one night and he was so surprised, he was looking at her with like this like really, really confused look because he's so used to seeing me cooking and he looked at her like, you do it too? Like what? And he was so, so like perplexed and like amused that my mom could cook as well. <laughs> 
so he knows not to go into my studio so my studio is I it's like the second bedroom in my condo and I use that as a studio and um, I used to have to keep the door shut because like he would always come in and like there's like crumble on the floor and I do not want him eating whatever I cook because it's like gonna be chocolate and he's gonna get sick so he's not allowed in there at all um, but I've trained him so that he knows not to go in and sometimes he pushes it sometimes he pushes it but most of the time like 98% of the time he sit I can have the door open and he just sits like he knows where the barrier is that he can't cross and he sits and he just like watches me it's so cute I'll start a photo I had the door like closed a little bit but he was like looking through the crack it's so cute okay so the last fact which is whoop, the most exciting fact and is like a fact slash announcement is that Paddington is going to be a big brother soon and no I'm not pregnant oh my god like honestly who would the father be I have no idea but um <laughs> I I contacted his breeder to see if I could get a second palm and so the reason why I'm going back to his breeder is because Paddington is such a dream like look at him he's just like the sweetest like most well-behaved puppy in the world he is look at you oh you're like closing your eyes you're so happy look at my little man um and since she knows paddington i thought that um i just tell her like whatever um no no stay with me so i told her like whatever dog you think like whenever you get a dog that you think like would be a good match for Paddington, just like send it over. So I don't know if it's gonna be a boy or a girl. Paddington's a boy, um, so I don't know if like a girl would be a better match because then there wouldn't be like dominance issues or something like that, um, or like hierarchy issues or something. Um, but yeah, so in six months time there will be. So in six months time there will be a new puppy. In my house, I'm so excited. And um, I was debating between a palm or a pug, and I finally settled on the palm just because, like, they're so cute, and like, I want just like a house of fluffy. And because they're the same size, it'll be really, really easy or much easier to like carry them both at the same time because it's like two, like 12 pounds spread out versus like six pounds and then like 20 pounds. Sure, as possible. Um, I mean, my third dog will be a pug or something, but yeah. Side note extra fact, extra fact. <laughs> I almost adopted a Pomeranian when I was at VidCon this year. <laughs> oh my gosh, if I can find the video, I'll insert it here of the dog or I'll insert it whenever it's relevant in the story. Um, but I was flying down to VidCon and on like the plane before I was getting to take, before I was about to take off, I was on Facebook and um, someone, I don't know how I saw it, but someone shared in like one of the Pomeranian groups this video. Oh my god, that's so loud. Okay, you need to stop. You need to stop. Just have this. It's quiet. But, but no. But no, I want this. Alright. Um someone shared this photo, this video that like made me cry. I don't cry in public, but it made me cry in my seat of uh, this palm reading that was like just dropped off and it was like in oh god, I want to cry now. It was in the kennel and it was shaking and just like the look of fear in its eyes. I felt so so bad oh god even now oh god it's so so sad like the just like the oh my god i was so upset and i'm like i need i need to save that dog like just like the horror it was so scared it was in the corner it was shaking and it like reminded me so much of paddington and like oh oh my god even now oh. um so at my layover i think it was in San francisco i called <laughs> My mom's like, this is so impulsive, but uh, I called the shelter and asked them to be put on the wait list, and apparently there was like someone else who was like going to see them before me, um, see the dog before me, but like if they weren't, if they didn't go through with it, like then I could go and pick it up, um, but yeah, I'm like, do you have like a crate that I can take home in, and they're like, no, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like insane, like going from VidCon to like, wherever the heck I need to go to pick up a dog and then like somehow bring it back to the hotel and then fly home, like what do I do? Because it was actually really close to um, like where VidCon was being held. <laughs> so um, yeah, I I was so close and I was like very prepared. I looked at my name on the wait list and everything like that. So I was like about to bring home the dog. I was like 50% sure that like it was gonna be mine. And um, the first people who actually ended up seeing the dog took it home. So I'm glad that it has a home. Um, and who would have known if it like would have gotten along with Paddington and that was like one of my main 
where it was like, what if I bring this dog home and like they don't get along or yeah, like like what if? Like that would be awful, right? Because like I don't, as much as I want to like save another dog, I have to take my own dog's like name. That's to put them first because like he's Paddington like is, was here first, right? And I need to make sure that it doesn't hurt him or um, that it's like in his best interest as well. So I knew that like there were risks or that I'd have to like take more steps, which I was willing to do. Um, and if the dog was available, I like definitely would have taken it. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So I almost adopted it. I think I would have named it like Teddy if I had taken it home. So, Teddy. Anyways, um, but yeah. So I am going to get another palm. I'm debating between dumpling, nutmeg, and jelly bean. My friend Jordan last night actually we were talking about that. Um, which is Jordan is one of my friends from high school. I have a bunch of like guy friends from high school, so we have like a group chat on WhatsApp. And we were talking about like dog names and he suggested Jelly Bean and I think it's so cute. Oh my god. So um he's gonna be so amused if I like choose his name. Like I just I can only imagine like the conversation. But um yeah, I think Jelly Bean is so cute. So we will see. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you like this video. And um yeah, so I will see you guys on Tuesday for an all new video. If you have any requests for other Sunday videos, let me know in the comment section down below because um, I need some ideas. I have a couple, but I want to like prioritize what you guys want to see first. So let me know. And I love you guys so much. If you haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you're notified when Tuesday's video goes up. I love you guys so much. And yeah, I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.